Praise God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Praise God. We just want to make sure our volume's fine. Make sure everything else is fine. Praise God. We don't want to um just want to check. Here we go. Wonderful. Praise God. Just make sure we have our recording is on. Good, wonderful. So that is on, that is on. Just want to make sure that our <coughs> volume is good and is not distorted. Praise God. We greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ on this midweek. Um, after again all the toils of the day, the toils of the few days, we come into his presence this evening to worship him, to praise him, to give him glory. He's worthy to be praised. That's the reason we live in. That's the reason we are here upon the earth is to worship him, to praise him, to give him glory, to give him honor, to give him thanksgiving. For this reason we were formed to worship the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. He was the beginning and the end of all creation. Praise God. So this afternoon, this evening, shall we turn to the book of Psalms number 4. The fourth Psalm. The book of Psalm number 4. Shall we stand for the reading of God's word? In respect to God's word. <clears throat> I greet you all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Those on the internet. Those on Facebook. We welcome you. Uh, we're so glad that you could join us in worship and praise unto our Lord. We like to start our service by reading from the book of Psalms, Psalms chapter 4. Hear me when I call, O God of my righteousness. Thou hast enlarged me when I was in distress. Have mercy upon me and hear my prayer. O ye sons of men, how long will ye turn my glory into shame? How long will ye love vanity and seek after leasing, sailor? But know that the Lord hath set apart him that is godly for himself. The Lord will hear when I call unto him. Stand in awe and sin not. Commune with thine own heart upon your bed and be still, sailor. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. There be many that say, who will show us any good? Lord, lift up, lift thou up the light of thy countenance upon us. Thou hast put gladness in our heart, more than the time that their corn and their wine increase. I will bo both lay me down in peace and sleep, for thou, Lord, that makest me dwell in safety. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Shall we pray? Father God, we come before you, Lord God, Lord Jesus, at this time, the midweek, oh Father, the a few days has gone since we last come before your presence, Lord, together to worship you and to praise you and to thank you. We're here once more, Lord God, to fall at your feet to worship you. You're worthy to be praised, you're worthy to be uplifted, you're worthy to be glorified, to be uplifted above every other name on the heaven and earth, the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, our mistakes are many, our faults are many, our failings are many. We still, Lord, live in this body of 16 elements of flesh. Forgive us for our mistakes. Forgive us for our faults. Forgive us for our failings. Lord, we sometimes see things that people get hurt, Lord, and forgive us for that, Lord Jesus. And then people do things against us. We forgive them also, Lord. Father, we don't hold anything evil against anyone. We love them all. And Father, this night, O oh, great God of heaven, we don't come before you, uh, Lord, to fellowship. Uh, but, uh, I mean, we come before you to fellowship, but not to be in some uh, proud way or some haughty way or, or feel that we are popular or we, we are something. We are nobodies, Lord. We are nothing. I'm your unprofitable servant. But we, your children, come according to your word and according to your prophet's message. Hallelujah. And you say, Lord God, seek and he shall find. Knocking and it shall be opened. You say, ask what you will, O Lord God. You did say that. And according to your prophet, you, Lord God, you spoke it. Lord God, and it's going to happen, Lord. So, so shall it be in our lives. So, bless your people. Touch, Lord, uh, those who are sick and afflicted. Lord, raise them up from their sick bed. Lord God, you know my family, Lord God, that my cousins and so on. And in mourning, I've lost my first cousin, Lord. Uh, Lord Jesus, she, Lord, passed away, Lord God, and... Lord, she loves you, Lord, so I'm praying that she's with you, Father God. And so I ask you to comfort the family in Trinidad, Lord. 
Be with them, O Lord Jesus. And Father God, and today, Lord God, and we remember, Lord God, our pastor once more up in Trinidad, Lord, even like Tabernacle, continue your healing up for, Lord, continue your touch upon his body. Strengthen him, Lord. Raise him up, Lord. May he be a miracle, Lord, and a sign. Bless his precious wife, Lord, brother, uh, brother Sa- Sister Eve, Lord, and remember once again, Brother Sankey, and the f- church, even like Tabernacle, and other churches that might be listening. Our precious brother there in Pakistan, oh Lord, go, God who has joined up with us, Lord, may you touch him. May you bless his church, Lord. Be with everyone who is uh, here on Facebook and on the internet, Lord. May your Holy Spirit move upon your people as we come into almost like the top, Lord, of our little study of the last uh, week or so, Father. May you take the words, Lord, and bring it unto our soul in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen and amen. Praise God. Praise God. Oh, we together again. Just praising the Lord, we together again, in one accord. Something good is about to happen, something good is in store. We together again, just praising the Lord, or we together again, just praising the Lord. We together again in one accord. Something good is about to happen. Something good is in store. We together again just praising the Lord. And that's what we're here today to do, to praise Him, to worship Him. He's worthy of all praise. He laid down His life for us so that we could come into His presence, so we, had a, we have a clear part, amen, to our Father God who is in heaven, amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. So, blessed be the name of the Lord. So we welcome those on the internet, and we welcome once more those on the Facebook also, and uh, you may connect into us. We pray that God will bless you today. Um, we pray that God will open up His word unto you today. Praise God. Uh, we, we're hoping that you did look at a few of the messages that we have preached because this is in a, a series of messages we're preaching about um, the last day overcoming bride and start you off a perfect man by seven spirits and seven stars, seven spirits, seven voices, seven thunders, and then the seven thunders under the seventh seal. Praise God. And today we're going to continue a little bit further. Um, I looked at the video and I know that little chart that I held up wasn't really too clear. But um, I'm probably going to, next time I'm going to talk about it, I'm going to try to put it on a, a bulletin board or something behind me so um, so you all could um, could know about that chart. The chart that I showed was a chart for the statue of a perfect man. Praise God. I was in the book, The Statue of a Perfect Man. Praise God. So let us uh, turn to four portions of scriptures. We want to go straight into the word of the Lord. But before we go to the scripture, shall we sing a song, I love him, I love him, as we welcome the great Holy Spirit, the mighty angel of the Lord, the angel of the covenant, to come amongst us and show us his glory and and to show us his word. Oh, I love him, I love him, because... He first loved me and purchased my salvation on Calvary's tree. Hallelujah. We like to turn to four portions of Scripture. The first portion would be Second Peter chapter 1, verse 4 to 10, is a scripture we've been looking at for the past few weeks. Then the second scripture would be First Corinthians chapter 13, very familiar scripture. First Corinthians chapter 13. And then in the Old Testament, we'll go to Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. 
And the last portion of scripture would be Psalms 118 verses 22 to 24. Psalms 118 verses 22 to 24. I do have a, maybe one or two more scriptures, but I'll read it for you all. So shall we turn to Second Peter chapter 1 verse 4 to 10. And this is the scriptures we've been for, uh, studying for some weeks now. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these he might be partakers of the divine nature. Now watch closely. We are going to be what? Ta be partakers of the divine nature. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And beside this, given all diligence, add to your faith virtue. And to your virtue, knowledge. Now you notice we are adding to our faith. Because what? We have already escaped. Escape the corruption of the world through loss. We have already escaped that. So now we are adding to our faith. Let's read it again. And beside this, given all diligence, add to your faith virtue. So we are adding to our foundation of faith virtue. That's the first add. And to virtue, knowledge. And to knowledge, temperance. And to temperance, patience, and to patience, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity. For, for if these things be in you and abound, they make you that he shall neither be barren or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off, and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore the rather brethren. Give diligence. To make your calling. And your election sure. For if you do these things. He shall never fall. Hear what the last part says. If you do these things. He shall never fall. We like to read to. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And here we are familiar with the scripture. It's on charity. Familiar with the scripture. First Corinthians chapter 13. And though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I become like as I become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all, all faith and so that I can remove mountains. And have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burnt, and have not charity, it profit me nothing. Charity suffereth long, and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. Rejoice it not in iniquity, but rejoice it in the truth. Bear at all things, believe at all things, hope at all things, endure at all things. Char charity never faileth. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But that which is perfect is come. Then that which is part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. But when I become a man, became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly. But then face to face, now I know in part. But then shall I know even as also I am known. And now abide at feet, hope, charity, these three. But the greatest of these is charity. We like to read in the book of Zechariah. The book of Zechariah. Chapter 4. Two verses. Verse 6 and 7. Zechariah chapter 4. Verse 6 and verse 7. Then he answered. Which was the angel of the Lord. Answered and spake unto me saying. This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel. Saying. Not by might. Nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. 
who art thou, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel thou shalt become a plain, and he shall bring forth the headstone. Wherefore, with shoutings, whereof with shoutings, crying, Greece, Greece, unto it. One more portion of scripture. Psalms 118, verses 22 to 24. Psalms 118, verses 22 to 24. The stone which the builders refused has become the headstone of the corner. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day which the Lord had made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord, to worship you this night, Lord. We just read your word, all the scriptures. There's so much more scriptures that I could have, you know, taken and read because your word is so wonderful. And where Peter even talked about the stone and the builders rejected and how we are lively stones and all these things, Father. Lord God, we're so glad that the word of God, that you have, Lord God, opening up the word of God to us, Father. Tonight, once again, we ask for your great Holy Spirit, Lord. Lord, oh Jesus, I'm just a vessel, oh Lord God, and I know not what to say unless you put it in my mind to say it, and my heart to say it, or oh, open it up in front of me for me to see it, to say it, Lord. Lord God, I'm an un unprofitable servant, unworthy, Lord, but because of your grace, because of that call and that you have placed in my life, Lord, I have, Lord God, as Paul would say, woe is me if I don't preach this gospel. Forgive your servant, Lord, for his mistakes and his faults. But may you come down today, Lord, and come out of the pages of the word, Lord, and vindicate it to the people. Quicken it to the hearts of the people, Lord. May the Lord see their names, Lord. May they rejoice, Lord. May they understand, Lord God, what position they are and who they are, Father. Grant it, merciful Father. Lord, bless the people who would come under, the believers who would come under archives, Lord. May your Holy Spirit anoint them and bless them. Father, Lord, now take the, the word, Lord, come out of the pages of the scripture, Lord, and vindicate it and manifest it to your people. In Jesus Christ's name, amen and amen and amen. Praise God. So for tonight, uh, title, Charity, the Capstone of Love. For our, char for our title, Charity, the capstone of love. And charity means love. And for a subject, you know our subject has always been our Lord Jesus Christ. He's a subject of the Bible from the beginning of Genesis all the way down to Revelation. He's the one we love, we adore, we worship. And uh, the subject therefore is Jesus Christ, the headstone, the chief cornerstone. And what is our inspiration? Our inspiration is that we want to um, I mean, we have gone through a few days, a few weeks of, of different um, messages, uh, all focusing more or less on, the, on similar things of the scripture. And, and uh, so what do we want to understand today? We want to understand, our inspiration is understanding charity, the seventh ad. Now, if you look in, in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse uh, um, 4 to 10, you'll see there were seven ads to faith. So your faith is your foundation, and you add virtue, then you add knowledge, then you add temperance, then you add patience, then you add godliness, then you add brother love, brother kindness. And then the Bible says to add charity. So charity is the seventh ad. So what is our inspiration? Understanding charity, the seventh ad. So tonight before I, I go into the details of the service, for those who are uh, coming on for the first time, who have never heard uh, our services, you have come in for the first time. My name is Brother Virgil C. Passat. I'm the pastor here at the Bride Age Christian Fellowship in Orlando, Florida. We are broadcasting out of Orlando, Florida. And um, we are also on Facebook. Um, we want to let you know we believe in the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. We believe that his return is very, very soon. We believe because of the things that are happening all around the world, all these uh, plagues that are striking the earth, uh, the whole world economy is devastated. We believe all these things are signs of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. According to Ma Matthew chapter 24, he, the Lord Jesus Christ himself prophesied. 
We want to let you know that we believe that we're in the last church age. And this last church age we have identified as in Revelation chapter 3, verse 14 to 22. Amen. We have identified that this last church age is Laodicea. And we have also identified that since Jesus Christ left this earth and, and, um, and Paul started to preach uh, in way back in uh, AD, uh, I think it was uh, 53 or whatever it was at that time, that, that we, believe, we saw and we recognized and we have identified seven church ages. And these church ages are found in Revelation chapter uh, 1 all the way to chapter 3. Seven church ages. Amen. Praise God. And these church ages are Ephesus and, Sa- Sa- and Smyrna and Pergamos and Tyrotyria and Sardis and, and um, Philadelphia and Laodicea. And for every one of these church ages, they, we have identified a messenger for each one of these church age. And if you want to know more about uh, what, uh, what are these messengers and so on, we refer you to our June 30th. And you could find it also on um, YouTube, our YouTube channel, Bright Age Christian Fellowship. And on June 3rd, we preach the message, the rewards of the last day overcoming bride. And there you'll find the identification and the time of all these churches, these church ages. So we have this church age, this church age of Laodicea started in 1906. Amen. So we are in Laodicea church age. So we have identified a messenger for Ephesian church age, which was Paul, and and so on, and all the way, uh, Irenaeus and Martin, uh, Columbia and Martin and Martin Lu- and Luther and uh, Wesley and the last church age messenger. We have identified him to be Brother William Marion Branham. Amen. Brother Branham has come. Amen. He was born in Kentucky in 1909. Amen. He died in 1965. But according to Revelation 10, 7, it says, But in the days of the voice of that seventh angel messenger, we have identified that this angel messenger in Revelation 10, 7 said he must be a prophet. And we have identified this prophet also in Malachi chapter 4, verse 5 and 6. So you will hear me making a lot of quotes from this man, Brother William Marion Branham, because he was he was baptized in the 17th person in 1923 in the Ohio River. And a star, a light, a ball of fire came down from heaven. And, peop- and people were all in the back, they fell. They heard thundering. Uh, they fell on the ground. They were just, well, I mean, uh, this was a surprising event. And out of that ball of fire came a voice and it said, As John the Baptist fall on the first coming of Christ, your message will fall on the second coming of Christ. So we have identified Brother William Marion Branham as a messenger for the seven church age. Now I can't go into a lot of details about the message because of the time constraint. I don't want to keep uh, uh, you believers too long. It's the middle of the week. Some people have to go to work and other stuff. But I uh, suggest that if you want to know more about our little group here, the Bride Age Christian Fellowship on our website www.brideagechristianfellowship.org on the missions there's a video 55 minutes 11 seconds that will explain to you my testimony also explain to you what we believe and if you need to know more about Brother William Marion Branham, I direct you to go to this website, Voice of God Recording, at www.branham.org. www.branham.org. And B-R-A-N-H-A-M. This uh, website, you'll find all of Brother Branham messages and videos and explanations and, and, and uh, testimonies and so on. This website is run by Brother Branham's two sons, Brother Billy Paul Branham and Brother Joseph Branham. So uh, feel free free to go if you need to know more about Brother Branham and his ministry. Praise God. But as I said, because of time, we are constrained to uh, not to go into detail. So that's why I put it on the website. Praise God. Hallelujah. So we have been going through, and I just want to do a little bit of a recap. We have gone through our one, two, three, four, about four, five different services. Um, uh, the first one, we talked about the rewards of the last day overcoming bride, and that was preached in June, thir- June 3rd, 2020. It's on the, it's on the YouTube. It's all also on our website. So, um, we'll be, we'll be kind of, um, summarizing all these messages. There's another one we preach on the statue of a perfect 
big man by seven spirits and that was on june 21st amen it's also on youtube and then we talk about the seven uh, seven stars seven spirits seven voices seven thunders amen of revelation 10 7 amen we identify that's another message we preach on um on the 21st of june Praise God. The study of a perfect man was preached on the, by seven spirits was preached on June 24th. And then we preached the seven thunders under the seventh seal. Praise God. I was preaching June 28th. Amen. So today we just want to recap a little bit. I want to read some quotes for a quick recap because today now um, we want to talk about that seventh ad. Remember, um, I wish if I uh, I could show you again of this uh, this chart, but it doesn't come out too well. But I'll just raise it up so you could see um, you could see the um, you could see that it's a pyramid. Amen. Just going to raise it up here. You're going to see it's a pyramid. Praise God. You see, it's a pyramid. Um, and then there's, there's all these seven church age messengers. And the top is, is love. That's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about that top, which is love. I bring it a little closer so you could see. Amen. So you see the top, that is perfect love. That's what we're going to talk about today. So you see it's seven church ages. Praise God. Seven messengers. Amen. I know it doesn't um, come out too well, but I just wanted to, to identify to you what we're talking about. So this is a perm. It's a, it's a shape of a pyramid. Amen. Praise God. And we talk about last time that God is light. God is white light. Amen. Praise God. The supreme beam that exists, he moves around like white light. Amen. And what happens? That uh, uh, he's made up of seven spirits. Now, he's not seven individual spirits, but like we talked about last time, if you have a glass prism, a glass prism, and you shine white light through that, sorry, what comes up? Seven colors of the rainbow. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. And that represents the seven spirits of God. But if you take those same, same colors and you pass it through another uh, a glass prism, what happens? It comes back into white light. And that's what we're talking about. God in His eternal uh, wisdom and knowledge and kindness and love and compassion shine through uh, the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is well like a prism. Amen. And when He shines through that, out comes faith and virtue and knowledge and temperance and patience and godliness and brotherly love, brotherly kindness. Out comes red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. But then if we put the bride of the Lord Jesus Christ as an, as the next prism, what happens? That seven color rainbow flows into that, that prism. And what comes out? White light. Praise God. Hallelujah. So when that seven spirits of God from the seven voices of the seven church age messenger shines through the bride of the Lord Jesus Christ in this last day, what is going to happen? She's going to come out as white light. She's going to come out as a word of the living God. She's going to come out as part of that logos. Amen. And that's what you and I are going to be, brother and sister. We're going to be like God. We're going to be taught. We're going to talk like him. Don't you want to talk like your papa? Who's your papa? Your papa is God. Amen. You look like your papa. You, you walk like your papa. You talk like your papa. Amen. And you're going to manifest his very works as you grow in his Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So God in seven church ages. And let's, let's just read. Statue of a perfect man. Jeffersonville, Indiana. Sunday the 14th of, of October 1962. Morning service. Paragraph 362. Quote Brother Branham. And then God through that has brought also seven church ages to, tru- to show the seven steps that he brought building his individual into his image. He built a complete church in his image and at the resurrection this complete body will be raised up to live with him forever because it's his bride. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Paragraph 367. Amen. Now you know before I read this you know all the sages of old all those who died in Christ all those who died all the way back going back to Adam are waiting on you and I to come to perfection and we've just preached about how we are coming to perfection. Seven spirits, seven thunders some voices to come to perfection paragraph 367 you get it those people who died in there are dependent and waiting on us so this church has got to come to perfection in order to bring the resurrection and they are under the souls on the altar waiting for this church to come to perfection and then and when christ does come amen 
Praise God. And paragraph two, 369. Now remember when we look at the pyramid in between, um, in between that love, that love capstone there and, and then the other ladies here, church age, there's a little slot there that says Holy Spirit. Here, Brother Branham, what he has identified that. He said it's a little pocket like there and it's going to sit right in there on the regular pyramid. It just isn't a cap. It sits across the top. It's a little flange and it's got to sit there because it shed the water and when it comes this church has got to be home amen and all these rest the stones in the pyramid align so perfectly till you can't run a razor blade between them that he's talking about the natural pyramid weighing tons laying in there how did they get them there they don't know but they, they were built amen and up here when the pyramid cap comes down the pyramid itself, the body of Christ, will have to be honed. Not only just some creed or doctrine or something or other that we come through. It will have to be so perfectly like Christ. Till when he comes, he and that ministry will fit smack right smack together. See? Then will come the rapture and the going home. So that end of quote. So that little, that little uh, flange that you saw there, you know, it comes like that. That little flange that you saw there. Who, what is that flange? It says Holy Spirit. Amen. And that Holy Spirit is the Logos. Amen. So what we're looking at, that little flange, and I'm going to read a quote for you later on. That little flange is where you are sitting, brother and sister. You have come out of the Laodiceus, the Laodiceus spirit, the Laodicea age. You have come out of that. You have gone into what you call the bride age in there you have gone into the holy spirit age why because you are part of the logos you are part of that holy spirit you are part of him that come out of out of the logos that came out of god you are part of him amen inside of you is that that holy spirit logos that seed word with potentials you have his potentials and we're going to read it a little later on oh blessed be the name of the lord continue in the quote amen Brother Branham say, yes, here, yeah. uh, paragraph 4, 3, last, pa last part of it, whereby we are given to exceedingly precious promises, that by these we might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption. Listen to that. That is in the world through lust. Now what is it? Brother Branham says, paragraph 4, 5, lust for money, lust for big things, lust for popularity. These things are dead to the believer. We don't care. A tent or a cottage. Why should I care? Live or die. Sink or drown. This is a thing that I'm interested in. The kingdom of God. Whether I maintain my home. Whether I maintain my family. Whether I maintain whatever it is. Let me maintain Christ. Our hope our glory. Build me up O Lord into this. Let Christ be my head. That working, working through me. On my foundation. My faith that's in him let virtue knowledge temperance patience godliness brotherly kindness work in me O oh lord is my prayer i don't care live or die sink or drown denomination or no denomination friend or no friend let that work in me let christ's virtue his knowledge flow out that i might be able to teach those Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. For God has set in the church apostles and prophets and teachers and pastors and evangelists and all for the perfecting of the saints and bringing all those virtues into it for that perfection of the coming of the Son of God. Each one of these stones are a material of that one stone. This is the material of this. Each one of these virtues belong unto him and they are pouring out of him down all through down from, from, from virtue all from, uh, from brother love and brother kindness all the way down to faith. Amen. Amen. End of quote. So what brother Abraham saying? He said, I don't care if I maintain my family. I don't care about this coronavirus. I don't care about this. We have no job. I don't care that the money in the bank is going low or is almost gone. I don't care if we don't have food on the table. When the, when the squeeze come watch that third pull and how do you get that third pull is by seven spirits seven voices that we spoke about to be kept by charity and you cannot get to charity until you could have all these seven things operating in you by the spirit amen that's what we're preaching on today that's what we're talking about today oh sure we talk about adding faith and virtue and knowledge wonderful and you say well brother I've, I've lived in that all my life I've been a Christian 40 years amen but we are 
are waiting on charity to come down. Amen. And charity is going to flow into each one of these and you're going to be a live voice. Amen. So what happens to this world? Brother, this world could go whatever direction it could go. Whatever the governments want to do. Whatever the governments want to clamp down. Don't you understand, brother, that this is the close of the Gentile church age. Be ready, be ready, be ready for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't sit back in your laurels and say, Oh, I was a good minister all these years. I was a good Christian all these years. I went and feed the poor. I helped the believers in distress. I do this. Oh, I had charity. Yes. Oh, I love all my brothers. I never do anything wrong to them. Oh, I have faith. I have virtue and knowledge. Oh, brother, that's wonderful. But without charity coming upon it, without charity manifesting every one of these virtues, Christ-driven service, Christ-ordained service, virtue powerful service, without it, amen. What you know what, what the Bible say? I become a, a, a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. Although you could have all the faith that you could move all the mountains, you could preach till, you know, till, till you're blue in the face, amen. Or you could preach and it sounds so wonderful. People say, oh, you sound like an archangel. Oh, but if you have not charity, you are nothing. And how does charity comes up? Charity is made up of seven spirits, amen. Charity is that white light, amen. So that white light, amen, must, as it flowed through the word, as it flows through the prophet message, this prison, it flowed, now it's flowing into you. Seven lights are flowing to you. Seven spirits are flowing into you. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Seven spirits, seven colors flow into you. One, what happens? Oh, we want to see when it flows into you as a prison, as a reflection, as a glass. Didn't, uh, didn't in, in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, what did uh, Paul say? Oh, now we see in a glass darkly. Amen. We don't understand yet. We've seen seven uh, angels, seven spirits, seven voices of God flowing into you. Amen. Now it's a uh, glass darkly. We don't understand how it's going to be. But the words say that it will flow out white light. Once you have uh, established these seven spirits that are living in you, seven voices that are uttering out to you. Amen. Praise God. That's what we're looking at. Amen. Paragraph 416. There are seven qualifications to make the statue of God. There are seven church ages that God has brought the church to this qualification. And he has had seven messages to do it. There is seven, seven, seven. See, seven is God's number of completion. And three is God's perfect number. So there's threes and seven threes. So mathematically, spiritually, by the word, by the witness of the Holy Ghost, all of it has completed the thing together. Amen. Sorry, brother. I'm saying let's study it. Let's add to our faith these things, then that we might come in the full statue of Christ, being joined together with brotherly love. End of quote. You see what he says here? He said we must have all these things. We must come to that full statue. Amen. Now if you if you have if you say you have a, a virtue and knowledge, amen, and you can't control your tongue, amen, and you blabber and you babble, oh what you gonna do? You gonna say, Oh God, let that let the Holy Spirit, let that that fourth spirit come into the third uh, the fourth spirit. The fourth spirit come into me. That seven spirits that went out of God. Let that fourth spirit come into me. Amen. Come into me and change me. That I might control my tongue. Amen. That I could, that it must be seven births. Let's put it this way. These seven ads must be seven births in you. Amen. You are born of faith already. But then virtue must come into you. You must born in a virtue. Amen. When I mean born, I don't mean uh, you, you were born again in that sense. But I mean growing. Growing. Amen. It must be driven by that Holy Spirit that is in you. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Praise God. So, but how do you know? How can he identify that these seven spirits are living in you? Bible say, by the fruits you shall know them. When somebody say all sorts of things against you, you do rile off the temper, temper and said, Okay, um, wife, hold my Bible. I go on and hit him a few punch. No, 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 no. 
You don't do that. Amen. You what? You show brother love, brother kindness. You have temperance. You have patience with your brother. Put yourself in your brother's shoe. He is blinded. He cannot see. Amen. He cannot see. He has all his accusations against you. He says all kind of evil things against you. He cannot see. He's blinded. He's trying to take out a, a, a little, little uh, speck of dust in, a, in your eye while there's a huge moat in his eye. Amen. So what you got to do? Lord Jesus, pour out virtue, pour out knowledge, pour out temperance, pour it out upon me. Let me live. In other words, people must see virtue in you. Amen. And what is virtue? Amen. You, I, we spoke about it. I don't want to go into details. You lay hands upon the sick. They recover. Amen. You, 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 you talk to someone and that word that you speak, encouragement. Encouragement to them. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Fruits of that spirit. So that's how you are identify these seven virtues living in you. Praise God. We are, taught, we are doing a recap. Amen. Uh, the faith is the substance. Los Angeles, California. Tuesday the 8th of May 1951. Paragraph uh, E11. Quote, Brother Branham, There's going to be a redeemed body. Many of us people say, well, that person is going to be there because I heard him shouting and praising the Lord. Sometimes we like to take a person in that way. But that's not what Jesus said. Sometimes we say, oh, they'll make it because they were so filled, they spoke with tongues. That's still wrong. That's all right, but it's still wrong. Shouting is all right too. But the only way you'll ever get in there is when it's by the fruits of the Spirit. By their fruits you shall know them. Amen. A tree mightn't have a sycamore bark on it. But if it's a bearing apples, it's an apple tree. That's right. It's an apple tree because the sap, the life on the inside of the apple of that sycamore tree is changed to apple trees, life and bearing apples in a kind. No matter what outward demonstration you give, you give as long as the inward here in your heart is the Holy Spirit. It will be the fruits of the Spirit. Long suffering, goodness, meekness, patience, gentleness, faith, temperance. Now hear this. Satan can copy any of, the, of a gift, any kind of a manifestation, but he cannot love. God is love. That's right. Satan cannot love. Amen. He say, you see an humble man and loving and good to his neighbors and a good citizen and a good fellow and a good man and a Christian man full of love and humility. You watch that man. See? That's right. He is good, charitable, long-suffering. You could talk to him and it's all right. He forgives you. He, he don't, ha, don't make any difference to him. See? That's the real man. Keep your eye on him. That's the man that bears an example. End of quote. So what do you, you see here what Brother Bram say? Is the fruit. And an apple tree will bear apple. An apple tree will not bear grapes. Neither but a grape vine will bear grape. Amen. So whatever is inside of you will make itself manifest. Now you say, Brother Sipasad, I sure uh, I make mistakes. I Sometimes I don't have enough patience. That's okay, brother. Once your foundation is on the word of the Lord, you have to add these things. Amen. You have to grow in these things. That means that you're, you're probably a, a, a younger age as a Christian life. So what you're going to do? You're going to sweeten your life with prayer. You're going to sweeten your life with reading your Bible. You're going to sweeten your life with what? With studying the prophet message. Amen. So don't worry. Just add them in there by the Holy Spirit. How do you add it? Brother Sipa said you're talking about it all the time. How do you add it? But you know, the Bible says you can add a statue unto your, your uh, and add an inch unto your statue. How is it add? By the Holy Spirit that is in you. And how is it added? Well, here it is. It comes just fresh. It's added when you have a trial. It's added when you have a temptation. It's added when you have a, a, a something that you know that you're a little bit weak on. And God allows the devil to put that in front of you. No, he will rescue you, of course. Amen. But how do you add? By overcoming. Amen. Overcoming that, uh, that problem that you had. You, your tongue. Often on you would say things that are not right. How do you add? Amen. By overcoming it. So how do you add each one of these virtues in your life? When the trial comes. 
comes, when the tribulation comes, when the persecution comes, when they speak evil against you, when all these things come against you, amen, when you're sick in body, virtue, power for service, oh, that Holy Ghost in you, oh, you speak to the Lord, amen, Lord, I need that anointing, I want virtue, power for service, I want to be healed, Lord, you said I'm healed already, I want that manifestation of that healing to come upon me, or what was that? You demonstrated virtue, powerful service. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. The brother speak all kind of evil against you. He want to expose you to the world. Amen. He want to say all kind of, write you up on and, and condemn you. Amen. You know they do all the prophets out of all. You know they do Barbanum that also. They do Paul that. Amen. They speak evil about all his ministers of old. Oh, praise God. But you know, Paul killed a man. Moses killed a man and Paul regretted it up to his dying days. Amen. He wanted to go to Jerusalem to be sacrificed. Amen. To die because he, he, he agreed to the killing of, of, of Stephen. But yet God used him. What was it? Paul repented. Paul came to the Lord. His sins were washed away. Amen. How are you so sure that last night your brother or your sister didn't go down on their knees and say, Father God, my sins are many. Lord, I've done this. I've done wrong. I've made mistakes. I've hurt people. I've done things. Oh, Lord God, all these years, Lord, forgive me, Lord. Wash me with the blood. And the Holy Spirit came down on that brother, came down on his sister. Didn't God forgive you for your sins? Then why didn't God forgive him for his sins? Or her for her sins? Amen. The brother, judge not and you will not be judged. Amen. What you got to do is that you look at yourself first. Amen. Make sure you're standing. Make sure you're calling his election sure. And love your brother. Brother, I'm saying if you see a minister doing all kind of crazy things or whatever, it pray for him. Now another minister could go and uh, talk to him and say, brother, you need to do such and such, whatever, according to the word. But if you see your brother in, for, in fault, pray for him and go and try to help him. What did you say? He said, go for and some have compassion. Brother love, brother kindness. We have to love every brother, every brother, every sister, no matter what they have done you. So when this trial come upon you, what was it happening? Amen. You were demonstrating brother love, brother kindness. You were demonstrating temperance. You were demonstrating godliness. You were demonstrating holiness. You were demonstrating virtue, power for service. Because that trial came before you. So what you what happened? God in you added, amen, added to your stature. You're growing, you're growing in the stature of a perfect man. Just came fresh, amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So the trial of your faith work at patience, amen. And what did the, what did the Lord Jesus say um, to the Laodicea church age? As many as I love, I rebuke and I chasten. Be zealous therefore and repent. You're not perfect, brother. I am not perfect. I will make mistakes. I will try my utmost best not to say to something to hurt somebody. I'll try my utmost best. But I'm a human being. Amen. People will mi misunderstand the word that you say. What sometimes you say something. And before it gets to the ears of that believer or that person, the devil twists it to them. They hear something else. Amen. They hear something else. And they, they judge them in their heart. But you know what, brother? The Holy Ghost is in your heart. Take whatever someone have done to you and apply it to your heart. Amen. And say, Lord, I forgive them. Amen. No matter what they do. Hear what the prophet say? Sink or die. Sink or drown. Denomination or denomination. I don't care what else in the world. Don't care about nothing else, brother. But care about serving the Lord and climbing the steps unto perfection. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. By the fruit. So Satan cannot copy love. He cannot love. That's why he knows nothing about it. That's why love, uh, the third pole is incorporated in love. Amen. Satan knows nothing about it. Hallelujah. That's why the, 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 the seventh seal was open in love. Satan knows nothing about it. Amen. He cannot understand how this Logos could come and dwell and live in human beings once again. He doesn't understand it. What he sees? He sees 16 elements. What did Paul say in Romans 8, 7, 8? He said, Woe is me. The things that I want to do right, I found myself doing, making mistakes. I live in a body of flesh. But you know what he says? Romans 8, 1? He says, uh, he said, um, There's therefore now no condemnation. To them that are, that are godly and are walking in Christ Jesus. Who walk after, not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Praise God. So Satan cannot love. 
He knows nothing about that. He knows nothing about this Logos. He was not there when this Logos was formed. When you were in that Logos that came out of God, Satan was not there. Satan knows nothing about it. Satan knows nothing about love. If he had understood love, he would not have crucified the King of Kings, the Lord of Glory, the very essence of love that came out of the bosom of God. Satan knows nothing about it. Satan knows nothing about his third pole. What is going to happen in you, brother? Perfect love going to come upon you and you will become a part of that perfect love. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Statue of a Perfect Man, paragraph paragraph uh, 351. 350. Amen. I read this quote uh, last service, but I'm reading it again. Amen. I'm recapping. I haven't started a capstone yet. Uh, paragraph 350. If you die, you take the blood out of a man, you embalm him. Trouble of his is a lot of them never got embalmed. You take the blood out of a man, he's gone. That's the only thing you do is to put another blood back into him. And then he's going to live again. You took his blood out. See? Now we have put the blood of Jesus Christ in. See? And that brings the faith of Jesus Christ, the virtue of Jesus Christ, the knowledge of Jesus Christ, the temperance of Jesus Christ, the patience of Jesus Christ, the godliness of Jesus Christ, the brotherly love of Jesus Christ, and the love of God, which is Jesus Christ. He's the head and controls you, and your feet is the foundation. Faith. Amen. Controlled by the head. Amen? There you are. There is the perfect man of God when he possesses these virtues. Amen? End of quote. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. So now we recap. You understand. Amen? That these seven virtues must live in you. You must manifest every one of these. Amen? And how are you going to manifest it? It's by a trial going to come at you. A temptation is going to come at you. A tribulation is going to come at you. A persecution is going to come at you. The squeeze is going to come at you. And that's how you go to demonstrate the love of God in the squeeze. Then the prophet say, Oh, when the squeeze come, watch the third pull. Then I'm, I'm not adding to the word, but I'm saying something that Satan doesn't know about. That when the third pull come, watch the love of God in your life. Amen. When the third pull come, watch the Holy Spirit manifest perfect love in your life. Charity, amen. Because what? Charity never faileth, amen. Then Peter say, uh, in Second Peter chapter 1, what did he say? He said, if these virtues are in you, you shall not fall. Amen. You shall not fail. Because what? Perfect love will come upon you. So when the squeeze that is here now, watch the love of God. Amen. Watch the love of God. When they hate you. Amen. Watch the love of God. Amen. Because there's a trial that's going to come upon you. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Praise God. Now the capstone. Now we have, we have gone from faith and virtue and knowledge. So to the faith we add virtue. And to virtue we add knowledge. And to knowledge we add temperance. And to temperance we add patience. And to patience we have had godliness. And to godliness we have brotherly love, brotherly kindness. We have preached this for you for the last a week or so. Amen. And now, hallelujah, you have come out of Laodicea. Come out of my people and be more, not partakers of the sins of Laodicea. What he said? He said as many as I love, I rebuke and chastise. Come out of her, my people. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Amen. Praise God. If you know these little, these virtues are not living in you, repent and, and wait and you'll see that trial come and then you'll overcome it by the blood of the Lamb, by the Spirit. He said, not by might, not by power, but by my Spirit, say the Lord. And how are you going to overcome every one of this trial that's going to trial your faith all the way to burn love, but the kindness. How are you going to overcome? You're going to overcome by the Spirit, by these seven spirits that come out of God. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. We want to talk about a capsule now. We want to talk about perfect love. The capstone. Now remember, the capstone is who? The capstone is the Holy Ghost. The capstone is the Spirit of God. The capstone is God Himself. The capstone is the Logos. And the Logos is the Spirit that came out of God. The Logos, amen, is perfect love. Amen. So the capstone is coming down. Amen. So what has happened? Once that capstone comes down, it joins with that body and the, the bride is ready for the rapture. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now I'm just going to read here some quickly uh, quotes from Brother Branham. Amen. Jesus keeps all his appointments. 
Tampa, Florida, Saturday the 18th of April, 1964, evening service. Hear what Burr Barnum say now. Now, uh, just like the permit, paragraph 17, just like the permit, did you notice how the permit was made? He said, no permit doctrine, no, just a permit. Look at your one, sorry, your one dollar bill. The seal of the United States is that eagle. Well, why does it say over on the permit, the great seal? Why would it be greater here than the United States, the seal of the United States? The great seal, the eye watching. And the capstone that goes upon the permit was, it was rejected. It never was on the permit. Isn't till this day the stone of scone they claim, but it never was put on the capstone. Why? When Enoch and them in the early days built the pyramids down in Egypt, we find out that in there they knew that the cornerstone, the capstone would be rejected. And that pyramid is so perfectly together till it don't need mortar. It was so mechanically hewed out until one stone fits against the other. One so tight that you can't even put a razor blade between them. Now just keep heaping up and now it's all honed up. Honed up means to, to, to come to a point. Amen. Honed up on top, ready for the capstone when it will come. That's the way God has brought His church from justification, sanctification, baptism of the Holy Spirit, and now the ministry of the Spirit, which is what quickens the world. That ministry in the church will have to be just exactly like His. Amen. Just like this. When my shadow of my hand here, see, if I never seen my hand, see, I see the shadow. It's kind of pale. It gets away. But as it comes closer and closer and closer. The negative and the positive are coming together until they both become the same thing. That's exactly when the church and the world would be one. Like Jesus and God was one. Just exactly. God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself. And so will Christ have to be in the church, the anointed of the world, to make everything fulfilled. And that's the capstone that comes upon the last church age. Not Laodicea. Now it's a calling out of that. A bride out of a church. Hold on one second. I interject. Remember this pyramid we talk about. There's a little slot in between. Baba, I'm called the flange there. And what it says. Holy Spirit. So that capstone doesn't come directly on Laodicea. The prophet said it. It doesn't come on Laodicea. But it comes upon what? Those are called out of Laodicea. So you my brother and sister. Is not in that part that says Laodicea. You are called out by the Holy Spirit. You are above that. You are sitting in that little slot there. In that little uh, flange there. That says Holy Spirit, there you are sitting, waiting for what? For dynamics to come upon me, your mechanics. You, you have climbed those seven steps, and there you are on that seventh step for the for the seventh ad, amen, which is charity. So, right here, Baba say the capstone comes down not on Laodicea Church Age. It does not come on that because Laodicea Church Age is as has put the Lord Jesus Christ out of their church. Amen. Lord, you say church age. But what it comes upon? It comes upon that bride that is called out. Here's a problem. Say this. Amen. I'll read it again. That's the capstone that comes upon the last church age. Not the Laodicea. No. It's a calling out of that. A bride out of a church. Church out of a church. In other words, just like he called a nation out of a nation in Egypt. And now we are living in that day. And we are grateful for these great things that we are seeing. End of quote. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. What are we forming? We are being formed into the image of the Son of God. We are the members of the multi-members of the bride of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are climbing the seven steps. We have reached now. And we reach that seventh step. Amen. We are waiting for charity. Amen. And as I say, brother, if you still, you know, you know, uh, you know what I'm, I'm saying. If you, you still have things in your life, that's fine. Repent. And, and, and you'll see that trial come. And then you overcome it. Climb each one of these steps. Amen. Remember all seven virtues are to be in you. Before you can receive charity. Amen. God is waiting on you and me. Amen. He's waiting on us. To come to that perfection. To come to that point. When he could say. There's my first spirit flowing freely. Amen. Uh, the message of grace. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Brother a message of grace, Jeffersonville, Indiana, Sunday the 27th of August 1961. Um, in paragraph, he was just talking about they had, didn't have that architecture and all that stuff. Amen. 
Praise God, Brother Bram said there was atomic power that helped them build uh, the pyramid to have these stones weigh so tons and tons in the air and put so exactly. So let's read paragraph 54. It says, Amen. It's, uh, here, pa let's read paragraph 53. Now remember in our teaching on the lessons that we have been through, that we took the Great Pyramid and studied that for a while that Enoch must have built and the headstone was never put on the pyramid. I've been there. The archi architecture of that would never be replaced in this day. We have no machines that could build a pyramid, no powers, less the atomic power that could build a pyramid because it's too gi gigantic. Stones that would weigh tons and tons and tons stands way up in the air. So put that together that even a thin razor blade could not go through it. That's not even cemented. They just cut so that they fit. They join one on another. That's the way the body of Jesus Christ should be. So cut by the Holy Spirit, by God's great instrument and tool, that we are but joined as one person. We are not divided. We should be one person. And it goes to show that no machinery can do that. It takes God to do it. No mechanics of organization. No lodges. None of these things can do it. As good as their attentions will be, they can never do it because it takes God to do it by the Holy Spirit. What does Zachariah say? Not by might. Not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So why did they not put that capstone on the, on the pyramid of Egypt? Why did they not put it? Because it was a sign. It was a Bible that was written. Amen. And God put it in the pyramid. The first Bible was Zodiac. The second Bible was a, a, the pyramid. And the third Bible is you. is the word of God. And then it's living in you. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. So the, the headstone was rejected. Christ, the headstone was rejected. And then we say, well, where was he rejected? Once you come against that word, once you disobey, I could say of my own feeling, my own opinion, amen, in the Garden of Eden, that headstone was rejected, amen. The word of God was rejected. And that's why we had to come to uh, Eve rejected that word, amen. Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Elijah and the meal offering, Phoenix, Arizona, Thursday, the 10th of March, 1960. Paragraph 129, quote Parabranam, we look at Jerusalem and we see the Jews was blinded for our sake. The fig tree put in forth its bud, he said, and all the other trees. Billy Graham has caused a great revival among the nominal people. Oral Roberts has caused a revival among the Pentecostals. And now Jesus, the Son of God, has come into this remnant to pull the people for the capstone, to bring back the Son of God, to complete the thing for the coming of the Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ. Amen. As he said, as it was in the days of Sodom. Oh, and Gomorrah. Amen. As it is, so shall it be in the days of the Son of Man. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Continue to quote paragraph 131. Amen. Jesus Christ was the same thing. He was the God of the, he was the Son of God. No, he was God manifest in flesh. But his flesh was man. His spirit was God. Now let me just read that once more over. Jesus Christ was the same thing. He was the Son of God. He was God manifest in flesh. But his flesh was man. His spirit was God. Then he promised in the last days that he would come into his church a little while and the world see it me no more. Yet you'll see me, for I'll be with you, even in you. The works that I do shall he do also. See? Now that great physician is here, is here. Now I just want to make a little quote here. Uh, there are a lot of things that I said that are being censored. Amen. Uh, so, so I want to have certain things put on the internet. Amen. But I have given you the quote for you to read directly. Amen. So I've just given you a quote. Go back in the prophet message and read it directly. So here what Brother Adam says. Look at our papers. And there are certain things he said there about the condition of the world. Earthquakes in diverse places. All kinds of signs of it coming. The church falling away. The end time is here. Now God showing his signs too. We have been preaching about it. And if this Bible is true, which it is, I'm ready to die for that purpose. The Bible is true. Jesus Christ lives. We are His church filled with His Spirit. 
then His life in us will produce the same life that He lived in the Son of God. If the Holy Spirit lives in us. End of quote. Amen. You hear what He says? If that Holy Spirit lives in you, then it's going to perform the same thing that, that, that Jesus performed. Of the, and then what it is? Seven spirits by seven voices that spoke of faith all the way to brotherly love, brotherly kindness. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. So that's the capstone. Who is the capstone? Jesus Christ Himself. Who is the capstone? Dynamic stereo mechanics. Who is the capstone? Perfect love. Amen. Who is the capstone? That portion of the Holy Spirit. That Logos is that capstone. That's what we're waiting for. Amen. The seventh ad. Amen. And how can we get that seventh ad? It's by that squeeze that is coming upon you. When, they, when they're going to squeeze you from the right. They're going to squeeze you from the left. They're going to squeeze you from the front. They're going to squeeze you from the back. Amen. You'll have no other way to go but up into the rapture. It's not going to be easy, brother. I'm, I'm, I'm prophesying from from now according to the word of the Lord not virgins uh, brother virgins prophecy but the word of the Lord it's going to get worse it's going to get worse you think what you're seeing is just this is just brother Ram says it's just a toothache amen this is what is happening cancer and all these viruses like a toothache he said man is going to rot in their flesh amen buzzers is going to eat out of them amen they're going to drop like flies in the street amen and did we see that out in China amen but the brother and sister is because going to get worse Amen. And don't worry about it, brother and sister. It's the coming of the Lord. You shall not fall. You shall not fail. Because charity, the bride absolute, charity never faileth. And once you get that charity, the dynamics upon your mechanics, you shall not fail. Don't worry. Didn't the prophet say, when the squeeze come, watch the third pull. Amen. You're going to have it, brother. Don't worry. It's coming. You're growing into it. It's going to happen. When you don't have food, on your table when you have no money to buy food when you can't do anything else but sit at your table then you cry unto the Lord and it was spoken and there your food will appear amen when you need healing you for your child amen what you do you speak the word in amen in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and you're led by the spirit you're led by charity that's what we're looking for. You might be sick. You might be tired. You might be exhausted. You're going through a sickness all these years. Amen. But what I'm saying today, brother, charity never fail it. Amen. That sickness is a trial. Oh, when they speak evil against you is a trial. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. It is I, Be Not Afraid, Tulsa, Oklahoma, Tuesday the 29th of March, 1960. Paragraph E30. Quote, Brabranum. Jesus has already healed every one of you. You have been healed for, for 1900 years since he was wounded for our transgressions. With his stripes we were healed. And if you were standing here tonight in a corporeal body, that body sitting at the right hand of God Almighty, when it comes back, time shall be no more. There will be a rapture and the church will go up to meet him and will be with him. We will meet the Lord in the air when he comes back. His coming will be as the lightning shineth from the east unto the west. So shall his coming be and every eye shall see him. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. But his Holy Spirit is here. Amen. Since the days or days of Luther, they lived under justification. The days of Wesley, they come a little higher. The church become in the minority on the sanctification, sorry. Then come the Pentecostal move. Amen. Which was the baptism of the Holy Spirit or the restoration of the gift. Now we are going just in above that to the capstone. The church has got to be like the church, the spirit in the church. And the spirit that's in him has to be the same. So you see where we are, brother? We are not in Laodicea. You have come out of Laodicea. Now we're in the Laodicea church age period. But you have come out of Laodicea. And you're what? You're sitting in that flange, hallelujah, called the Holy Spirit. Waiting for what? The capstone. Waiting for what? The, the chief cornerstone. Waiting for the Holy Spirit. Waiting for dynamics. Waiting for your complete restoration of your body like how it was going to be in the days of Adam when he walked upon the earth before the fall. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now God confirmed the covenant with Abraham. Did you notice what he did? He killed his animals and put the doves and so forth in there and made a covenant. Now what is a covenant? In America we say let's make a covenant. Covenant. All right. 
we'll have a little lunch, we'll shake hands and say, we'll agree. That's a covenant. Over in Japan, when you make a covenant, they throw salt on one another. That's a covenant. In the Orient, in the time of Abraham, when they made a covenant, they killed a beast, like Abraham did, divided the ram and so forth, and the she-goat, or whatever he, he divided there, three animals, and laid them apart, and then they wrote out their covenant on a piece of paper, stood in between those two, and make a vow one to another, that if they broke this covenant, let their bodies be like that, that dead animal. And they tore the covenant apart, like this. Here's a piece of paper. And he took one piece of paper, one the other, to confirm the covenant. Both pieces had to come and dovetail the same. You couldn't copy it if you had to. There's no way of doing it. Amen. You had to be the same. And that's what God did on Calvary. God was showing Abraham that through his son Isaac would come Jesus. And God took Jesus to Calvary. And there he tore him apart. And he raised the body up and set it on his right hand. And sent the same spirit was that was on him down on the church. And at that resurrection, the spirit that was in Christ will have to be in the church or oh, it's not the covenant I hope you see it brother sister the spirit that was in him has to be in you and what is it charity the cap and stone or the capstone of love charity the capstone of love which is the logos which is the spirit of God which is the spirit of Christ must come upon you amen and 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 burn every one of these virtues that it will live amen out of your life amen Amen. He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. End of quote. Amen. Praise God. So the capstone, the capstone was rejected. Amen. They never found the capstone for the pyramids in Egypt. The capstone was rejected. Christ, the, the, the headstone was rejected. Amen. Be, oh, hallelujah. But we have grown, Brother Ramsey, uh, reading from Adoption, um, chapter 2. Amen. Wednesday, the 18th of May, 1960. Amen. Just one short uh, part we are, we are reading. Now it's built right up to this point. Paragraph 47. And the stone on the capstone was never found. They never did put a cap on the top of the pyramid. I don't know whether you know it or not. The big pyramid of Egypt. It never had a top stone of it. Why? The capstone was rejected. Christ. The headstone was rejected. But as we grow from the Lutheran age. Baptist age. Pentecostal age. Methodist age. Pentecostal age. We are right up to the captain stone now. See? Waiting and longing for that cap and stone to set down and the building is complete. Praise God. Hallelujah. And uh, have you not read in the scripture, the soul stone was rejected. Of course, we, reali we realize that it was talking to the Sa Solomon's temple. Amen. Solomon's temple, but a rejected stone has, come by, has become the chief of the corner. But I'm saying this only to make you have a picture of it. Now in the Bible... We are living in the last days, the top of the pyramid, the cross fishes of the cancer age in the zodiac. Amen. In the time of the coming of Leo the lion, in the cap and stone, in the days of the manifestation of the sons of God. See, we are right at that end time. End of quote. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Brother Adam said here, yeah, I have a little uh, uh, quote here. Uh, Brabham talk about, he said, what happened? In those days, they had so much uh, technology in the days of, of Enoch when the pyramids were built. He said there was so much technology. He said they had atomic te uh, technology just like now. He said, what happened? Amen. They messed around with the atomic energy. And what happened? It destroyed the world by water. It threw the earth uh, away. Amen. Straight. Amen. From its axis and caused rain to fall upon the earth. Amen. Um, praise God. Hallelujah. So the pyramid was rejected. Amen. Let's just read. Praise God. Abraham's covenant confirmed. Long Beach, California. Friday the 10th of uh, February 1961. Paragraph E. E. Uh, 39. The last, the last part of it. Amen. Now did you notice? The capstone is even not on it. Neither is a pyramid cap. Why? The capstone was rejected. Jesus Christ, the head of it. Exactly right. Now notice, in the Lutheran age, what did we live? Justification. Way down here at the bottom. Pl uh, plating the, the foundation stone. Luther and Wesley, we believe in sanctification. To come into the minority. Pentecost, still the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Up in the minority. But watch, 
the church that goes right on to the end, right on to the end of that. That church is going to have to be so perfectly like the ministry of Jesus Christ till when that headstone comes. Amen. It sets right smack. If you catch it and know what I'm talking about, the very ministry that Jesus Christ was doing here on earth, when it comes back, the very same ministry at Pentecost will not have to widen itself out in organization, but shape itself up in Christ until the headstone and the church will fit one to the other. And them is so cemented till you can't even have a razor blade and go around and find a crack where they can put it together. That's how the church has got to come. So much like Christ. And look, what we have got to do then, cut away and circumcise and chop off and form and mold it into the image of Jesus Christ until that church and the cap becomes right smack together. Amen. Praise God. End of quote. So what we're saying, brother, we have preached about all these messages, how to, how, how to climb the seven steps. What are your rewards? What is a seven, the statue of a perfect man by seven spirits that came out of God. Amen. Understand that these seven spirits spirits must come into you. No, not seven individual spirits, but seven characteristic, seven attributes of God. Amen. Because God is love. Amen. He's perfect love. But when He shined off on the day of Pentecost, He came down as faith and virtue and knowledge and temperance all through the seven church ages. Amen. And what we must do. You say, Brother Sipasad, I want to receive charity. How can I receive charity? Amen. By these seven spirits that live in you, manifest in Christ. First of all, if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, you should repent, be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ according to Acts 2.38 and he shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now when you receive this Holy Spirit, it is a, a, a portion of that Holy Spirit that comes inside your heart, that take control of your life, that, that he is in the, the powerhouse, he is in the, uh, the cockpit, amen, he is in the, uh, up in the, uh, the, the powerhouse of the boat, amen, he is there to guide your life. That is the first step, amen, the Holy Ghost, and then now to that which is the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ in you, then has added faith, virtue, power for service, amen, amen and then virtue and knowledge, so how do you get this as we explained before amen, it's not a, uh, the four important things, amen you read your Bible every day read, uh, don't read just one scripture read a, oh, let me read a psalm and run out the door, no don't read your Bible every day Pray without ceasing. You could shout, you could sing, you could jump, you could uh, too much, but you could never pray too much. And then listen to the prophet message. Read his books. Amen. Amen. To know where you are and what are your promises. And then the final one is to have fellowship with your brothers and sisters. Do not neglect the fellowshipping together. I know now well, we are fellowshipping. We are fellowshipping under the internet. Amen. So we are not neglecting the fellowshipping. But when the churches are opening, or if they should open, then the neglect not to go into church. Don't stay home and say, oh, I have all the books. I have all the tapes. Brother, it's not going to help you. Ephesians 4, 11. Amen. Is where you come to perfection. But read the books. Amen. Of your own. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. So what is Christ doing? He has brought you out of where? Laodicea. Place you in this bright age. Place you in that Holy Ghost uh, flange. Place you there. Amen. Waiting for charity. And the only way you could be in that flange, in that Holy Ghost uh, uh, slot or spot, amen, is when you have identified in you that by the Holy Spirit that faith is working out to you, virtue is working out to you, all attributes of the Holy Spirit is coming out of you. Amen. So there you are sitting. Let's read Abraham Covenant. Confirmed. Amen. Paragraph 41. Now, brother, I'm talking about the Bible, amen, where it was written, amen. He said that the, the third one's written on paper. That is the great educational age that we're living in. Talking about the third Bible. Now, none of them contra uh, contradicts one another. My mood is a little dry. Amen. None of them contradicts one another. So you see. The great solar system speaks of Christ. Everything that you see speaks of Christ. If you just look at it, look at the church today in its condition, weak, backslidden, gone back into the world. That speaks of Christ. Exactly what he said. He'd stand at the door and knock. He's put outside. Organized, put him out. Organized religion, denominations, put him out. And set him outside. Their creeds and their dogmas, so forth, took him out. 
But listen closely what the prophet say. Let this sink into your heart. But he still stands at the door and knocking and said, Everyone I love, I chasten and rebuke. That's right. Trying to cut down them and bring them to a place, to a spot where that great capstone comes. The ministry that's in the church. And the capstone just comes right straight together like a magnet. So let's get ourselves together to meet that capstone. Let us love and project our lives in Christ. And be sincere and stay with the word until when he comes, we just fit right in like that, like the glove over the hand like that with him. Oh, that's the, what the church is waiting for. Yes, sir. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. The rejected king knocking at the door. But you know what? If you have come out of life this year, as you have with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you're no longer there. You have opened the door to the Lord Jesus Christ. He is coming into you. He's supping with you. Amen. He's there. He, hear what he says though. Everyone that I love, I chasten and I rebuke. Amen. So don't fall at his rebuke. Give up and go back onto the world. Take it as, as a true son and daughter of God. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Christ was that rejected stone, that headstone, but he wants to settle in your heart because you're going to accept him. You have opened up your heart and said, Lord, uh, that rejected stone, I accept him. Come to me, Lord Jesus. Come down, O oh great love of God, and dwell in my heart. Amen. Christ, the rejected stone, to come and live in you. Amen. Praise God. The statue of a perfect man. Paragraph, paragraph uh, 327. Amen. We're talking about the uh, capstone again. Um, uh, let's read 328. Now in the building, the virtue, building this monument, building this statue. See, it starts off with a foundation stone. Faith and virtue and knowledge and temperance and patience and godliness and brotherly kindness. Now what does it do? Then they're waiting for the headstone which is love, for God is love, and He controls, and He is the strength of every one of these. That's right. Amen. Praise God. Right here, you see? Brother Branham was identified. You see? The Holy Ghost coming down. See? The Holy Spirit is above all, welding this all together, building a perfect church for the capstone to cap it off. And what, is, what has been done again? It's manifested through seven church ages and seven messengers. Amen. So you're living seven voices and then you're coming to that spot there. Now we don't know when it's going to come. I'm praying that it's come very soon. But you know what? If, if every one of these virtues that are in us were, were, were displayed, were demonstrated by some trial, by some tribulation, by some persecution, by some squeeze, could it be that this capstone, this headstone, this charity, the, this cap and stone, amen, this, this capstone of love will come upon you when some trial come upon you. Maybe that ultimate trial. Who knows? I don't know, brother. All I'm saying, come Lord Jesus. Pour that Holy Spirit upon us. Pour dynamics upon us. Amen. Brother Branham says, the God's only provided place of worship. Uh, Shreveport, Louisiana, Sunday the 28th of November 1965, morning service. Here, quote, Barbaranam, paragraph 256. Sometime the capstone will return, the head of it, all of it, and receive the bride unto himself, which the woman is took from the man, a man of the woman. See, genes of the man is in the woman. What makes a woman? And that's the way the word of God is in the church. What makes the church the bride? Amen. End of quote. Hallelujah. Praise God. Continuing uh, page, uh, uh, paragraph two, um, 262. Amen. The Lutherans under justification, the feet, raise it up like that. Wesley under sanctification, Pentecostals under the arms, the works and the deeds and so forth. Had to be Calvinist and had to be Iranian, had to be legalist. But now we come to the head. The capstone, grace, grace, the capstone cried, the headstone cried, what? Grace, grace, you pass from death and, and creed into a living word of the living God. God's only provided plan for his age, his sons in the word age quickened by the spirit like a spark that's lit off something to make it alive and seal now in heavenly places. Amen. Seated in heavenly places, present tense, already alive and subject to every promise in the word. What does it do? You being a part of God's gene. A part of the word. Other men, 
a part of God's word, sealed together, manifest the entire body of Jesus Christ. Because there's no leaven among you. See? That, see what he's talking about, bro? No leaven among you, just the word only, seated in heavenly places, in the door where he put his name, Jesus Christ. End of quote. Amen. What is he saying? What is Brother Branham saying? Amen. You have, you are gene. You have a gene of the great almighty God. You are great almighty God, sons and daughters. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. I have to run down some of the quotes. Amen. Let's read from uh, Jeffersonville, Indiana. Sunday, the adoption, number four. Sunday, the 22nd of May, 1960. Evening service. Paragraph 32. And now we are coming right down. How many, I believe, some, um, you know, the pyramid never was capped. Amen. They didn't know what, ha what happened. Why was the caption in it? Because he was rejected when he come. He was a rejected stone. That's right. But it will be capped. That's right. And then all those stones that fit around that headstone, which is you and I on the top, will have to be stones that will be so completely like that stone, it will fit joint and everything and everywhere. The pyramid is so perfect. Amen. You can't run a razor blade through these stones. Amen. As Brother Branham has said before. Amen. And paragraph 34. Now notice, the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ is so close at hand. Amen. Until the Spirit from way down here, and he was pointed at the bottom of the pyramid, way down here, just barely, justification, sanctification, baptism of the Holy Spirit, and right now, into the time of the coming of the headstone. So what, where are we? I interject. We're in the time of the coming of the headstone. We're in the time of the coming of charity, uh, the capstone of love. Amen. And continue the quote, the church has got to be so perfectly like Christ until Christ and the church can unite together the same spirit. And if the spirit of Christ is in you, it makes you live the life of Christ, act the light of life of Christ, do the works of Christ. He that believed on me, the works that I do shall he do also. Jesus said that, see, and we are going to have, we have got a ministry coming. That's exactly like the life of Christ. What does that ministry identify? The coming of the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. End of quote. So, brother, that head must come upon you. And it's the Holy Spirit. Amen. As you add virtue and knowledge and temperance and patience and godliness and brother love and brother kindness, as you add that to your faith. Amen. You come to the top and then the head takes control. He guides you. He has the steering wheel. You don't have the steering wheel no more of your life. He has that steering wheel. Go dear son. Do that dear son. Speak that. Say that to that person. Oh son, uh, here it is. Uh, look, I have this for you. This gift for you, amen. He controls you. Who controls the body? Who? The head. Who calls his hand and say, hand, why wave like that? The head. With the what? The mind of Christ that was going to be in the head. That's going to be in you. Amen. Going to tell you how to work and how it operates by your Holy Spirit. And this being, amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Praise God. Statue of a perfect man. Paragraph 354. But each age, God has placed these things into the church and patterned it by showing that each individual has these, possessed these qualities that we just talked about. Faith all the way to, to, to brotherly love, brotherly kindness. And this being, this person, when it's completed, is the church of God going in the rapture. And this person, me, and which is completed is a servant of God in the church of God that's going in the rapture end of quote oh blessed be the name of the Lord when it's completed is when hallelujah charity dynamics but then you have a short period of time we talk about to display this to the world amen charity the bond of perfectness charity the bride's absolute charity amen charity hallelujah oh praise God charity is perfect love amen per charity the love of God charity the capstone of love amen the study of a perfect man paragraph 361 360. So when you surrender your, your complete being, then the Holy Spirit just pours through you in His virtues. So you see what He's saying? So you say, Brother Sipasa, what do I need to do? Surrender your whole self to the Lord. 
Heal yourself to your, the Lord. As a wife, heal herself to her husband. She doesn't question her husband. He's the boss. He's the authority. He's the head. She heals herself to him. So must you heal yourself to the Holy Spirit. Well, so when you surrender your complete being, continue to quote, then the Holy Spirit just pours through you and through his virtues. Then you will live in tabernacle. Then people look out and say, that's a man full of virtue and knowledge. He believes the word temperance and patience and godliness and brotherly love, brotherly kindness, full of the love of the Holy Spirit. See, there he is walking around. What is it? A statue that unbelievers can look at and say, there is a Christian. Amen. There is a man or a woman who knows what they're talking about. You've never seen a kinder, sweeter, godlier person. Your seal, a seal shows on both sides. Whether you're going or coming, you see the seal, the seal, just the same. There you are. See, when a man or a woman possess this, then the capstone comes down and seals them into the kingdom of God, which is the Holy Ghost. Then the word coming from here, all the way at the bottom, he's talking about faith. Manifests itself through every one of these things, see, and makes this complete being a tabernacle of the living God, a walking, living example of Christianity. What Christ was, these people are. So I interject what Christ was, how he was, so you're going to be. What Christ was, these people are, because his life is in there. They are in Christ, is in here, is in here, amen. Your heart, amen. Praise God. They are in Christ. They are in Christ and their life is dead and hid in Christ. Through God and sealed in there by the Holy Ghost. 1 Corinthians 12. That's right. You see? You reckon yourself dead. Then you are born of faith. Then virtue and these other things is added to you till you are perfect living image of God. Is that wonderful? End of quote. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. So, Brother Branham, preach this message. Amen. Statue of a perfect man. Oh, praise God. Amen. Statue of a perfect man. He preached this message. Our oh, last quote. Amen. Is this the sign of the end, sir? Uh, uh, the 30th of December 1962 evening service, Jeffersonville, Indiana. Amen. Paragraph 371. Hear what Brother Branham saying. Amen. Might be closer than you think it is. It's got me scared. Oh, I haven't done enough. Where are we at? Time shall be no more. He announces, the re uh, angel of Revelation 10, 7, announces, announces that time is over. What happens? What happens? Could it be now, brethren? Seriously think. If it is, then the pyramid is capped by the seven thunders. Amen. You remember the pyramid message? It is the capstone. What did it do? The Holy Spirit capped off the individual. No, he's talking about the statue of a perfect man book and tape. Amen. He said, that's the capstone message. He said, amen. What did it do? He said, the Holy Spirit capped off the individual and sealed it. When we added to our faith, righteousness and godliness and faith and so forth and kept adding to it till we get seven things. And the seventh one is love, which is God. That's how he made the individual. And caps him off and seals him with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. End of quote. So what we're saying. Amen. The capstone of love. And who is love? Jesus Christ is love. He was the very essence that came out of God. He was that logos. That love. What God was churning in his heart. All these. It was even time. He was just there. Amen. And out of him he booted his love. He wanted to be a father. Father. He wanted to be a God. He wanted to be your Savior. He wanted to be. He wanted to be your healer. Amen. Hallelujah. He wanted to love you. He wanted to have little ones. He wanted you to sit on his feet. He wanted to give you gifts. He wanted to give you things. Amen. He wanted to make you healthy. He wanted to make you well. Amen. Capstone. Amen. Charity. The capstone of love. So after you've added all these seven virtues, brother, the capstone of love is going to come upon you. Amen. Could be any time. Amen. But in the meantime, display the Holy Spirit. Consecrate yourself before God. Lay yourself before God. Say, Lord, this brother is saying things. Amen. Amen. He's saying things I may not fully understand. But you are the Lord. I yield myself unto, him, unto you, Lord Jesus. Oh, and may the Holy Spirit, that capstone of love, the Lord Jesus Christ, come into your heart. He loves you. You are his bride. Which, which person who is going to marry doesn't love his bride? Amen. They love the bride. That's why they want to marry them. 
He loves you. He wants to marry you. Amen. And how would He marry you? By coming down with the capstone of love. Behold. Amen. He cometh. Amen. Glory to God. He cometh with perfect love to come upon you. You are His bride. Amen. The Spirit and the bride say come. Amen. The bride and make herself ready. The capstone of love, charity, perfect love. The Lord Jesus Christ. Shall we stand? Praise God. Shall we stand? I'd just like to read a prayer from Brother Branham. A prayer from Brother Branham. Praise God. Amen, amen, amen. Oh, praise the name of the Lord Jesus. I'm missing a page. Hallelujah. Oh, well, let's read this prayer from Brother Branham. Praise God. From the context. From the con Oh, I'm sorry. Praise God. Amen. Yes. From uh, um, It Is I, Lakeport, California, Wednesday the 20th of, of July, 1960, from paragraph 54. And then also from the contest, December 31st, 1962, all years night it was. It was the 1962 all years. So we're just going to read, read the, the two prayers. Shall we pray? O oh, great Heavenly Father. I pray thee, Father, that these dear people across over these hills and over the cities and in their homes, may they talk tonight. And may I, on my road to my camp, maybe I'll be able to say that with those who are with me, did not our heart burn within us as we talked to him along the way? Come tonight, Lord Jesus. We're nearing the end time. This great state of California, wherever you may be, a great portion of the population of the United States come from here. Fashions and sent out from here, O Lord. It way out there in these people up in the lake, many of them down in Los Angeles and different places. Let thy Holy Spirit once more, Father, that they might know that the sign that the Messiah is nearing. The cornerstone, just like the capstone on the pyramid, it must coincide. Shall we close our eyes and continue praying? It must co coincide. The rest of the stones must coincide with it. Or it will never be capped. So it is with the coming of the Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, hallelujah. The church has to be so fitted that Christ and His church will be one when they come. So let His Spirit be so dominant, predominant tonight in our hearts and in our meeting that everyone will recognize that it is you and they wouldn't be afraid. They'll know it is you because you're the same yesterday, today and forever. Uh, make us fit servants. Forgive our past. Bless our future. Guide us, O oh Lord God, with thy mighty hand. Jehovah, bless these ministers here. Bless all the laity, all the visitors, those on the internet and so on, Lord. I interject, Lord. Be thou with them, Lord. We are your servants. We give ourselves wholly to you in 1963 and we say, Lord, 2020, that the power of your spirit might have more preeminences in our life and in our being. Help us, God. Forgive us. Help us, we pray. Pray, raise up mighty men, raise up mighty warriors of the faith. Open this year, Lord God. Continue this year, Lord, that hidden manna, that rock beneath the rock, that we might see the program of God. Cap off the pyramids of our life, Lord. Put the capstone, Jesus Christ, upon each and every one of us. May his great, magnificent, holy blessings be upon us all. May the fire of the Holy Spirit come upon us. May the power of the resurrection be made manifest, Lord. And God, we thank you tonight. We are yours. We give ourselves wholly to you, Lord. And as we come to the end of the broadcast, Lord Jesus, O oh, great eternal Father, perfect love, Lord, charity, O oh, God, uh, the, the capstone of love, let it come upon every one of our hearts, every one that is gathered under the internet, and Lord God, under Facebook, and they'll come under the archives, Lord. O oh, Father, and, and YouTube, Lord, Father, may you bless the people, may they understand, Lord, the seriousness of the hour, Lord God, that they will give themselves wholly unto you, praying and seeking your face. We feel your presence. We feel the anointing of your Holy Spirit, Lord. Move upon your, upon your people, Lord. Bless them and anoint them. Heal the sick and afflicted amongst them. Touch them, Lord God, by your Holy Spirit. Lord God, that they'll rise up off their sick bed, wherever they may be. Be with them, Lord, for the rest of the week. And should you tire, we meet again on Sunday morning. May your anointing be with us throughout the week, Lord. Let abiding glory remain, Lord, and quicken your people. We pray, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be your name, uh, the name of the Lord. We love you. We adore you. We praise you. We thank you. We give you glory, honor, and praise. Amen and amen and amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. 
Do you know him today? Please don't turn him away, oh Jesus, sweet Jesus. Without him, how lost I would be. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. May you be under the shadow of your wings. May you be protected. May you be guided. And when the trial comes, may he birth into you every one of these virtues. May it come out to you. May it flow out to you. Amen and amen. Give him grace. Give him glory. Give him honor. Give him thanksgiving. Choose every day. Amen. As if that day he's going to come upon you with dynamics to your mechanics. Amen. God bless you all in Jesus Christ's name. Thank you all for, for listening on Facebook. May the Lord keep you and bless